The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to a land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. A few years ago, I was on a commission. It was the Lutheran Catholic Covenant Commission in which the Archdiocese of Chicago and the Chicago ELCA Synod strove to come together to craft a statement of agreement in which we as Christians would proclaim the gospel and enjoy the companion and fellowship of one another. So instead of the historical anathemas uh, that were hurled against each other. We came together to find common ground. And of course, we found the common ground in our faith in Jesus Christ. How it is expressed may be different, but at least we were there as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ working out a peaceful solution to the problems that our churches have been a part of for, oh, these many, many, many years. In fact, I mean, I, you probably, as when you, uh, when you were growing up, were told not to associate with those Catholics. And they were told not to associate with those Lutherans. And so here we were together, seeking common understanding. It was, it was a part of the healing process in Christ in which we touched his cloak and could be healed. But I would like to think that God touched us and moved us to sitting together and talking about our differences, but really appreciating the differences, the rich traditions that we both had, and how we could come together and sign a concordat, which, which we did. Cardinal Bernadine, the Archbishop in Chicago, Cardinal Bernadine, and our Bishop, Bishop Sherman Hicks, signed a concordat, and it was placed in our churches and said, we have come together in agreement on all of these important points in faith and in fellowship and in love. It was really very powerful, a wonderful, wonderfully powerful movement. Well, on this commission, if we call it that, there was a woman, she was a nun, Sister Mary Ellen, who was very instrumental in doing all of this. Now, Sister Mary Ellen uh, was a very faithful woman, uh, and, but uh, one day, uh, earlier in her life, she fell down a flight of stairs and, and wrenched her back and shoulders so badly that she had constant pain I couldn't fix it. And you wouldn't know that by being with her. She never complained about the constant chronic pain that she had to live with day and night. And so we had a conversation, and I marveled at her ability to handle the day-to-day -day operations of her job and also to witness to Christ's love 
to her community and to us. I would have thought that an accident like that and the pain that was inflicted would drive her away from faith. What kind of God would allow this to happen to me? I'm a faithful person. Why does this happen to me? And she said, yes, that was, that was the immediate reaction to it. I, she said, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I, I felt the, those dark feelings of being abandoned and of being on my own and the thought of having to live in chronic pain for the rest of my life, well, that wasn't something that gave me a great deal of hope. But as she, as she continued day by day in her rehabilitation and in her work and in her faith, she found that instead of trying to run away from the pain, trying to isolate and feel sorry for herself, she decided to move into, lean into the pain. And what she meant by that was that because of her affliction, and this is very Pauline, Paul had the same thing going on in him and what he wrote about his affliction. She said it made me a little bit more human. It, it, it opened up a door that I hadn't seen before especially when I work with people who are suffering from chronic pain, because I know what that is like. And I can say from where I'm from and with my own affliction, I can reach people with a greater understanding and compassion than I would have had otherwise. And that's the word compassion. The word compassion literally means with suffering. With suffering. It's not pity, where pity is one step removed. Oh, I pity those, but I'm not going to suffer with you. Compassion is suffering with. And because she could suffer with, because she was suffering her affliction herself, she could connect with others. And she felt like she could be a healing presence to them who were in her situation. And to show that this chronic pain, although terrible, and I wish I could have laid hands on and wiped away the pain just like that, like we would want to, to alleviate, to eliminate that pain, how she eliminated, or didn't eliminate the pain, but helped heal her and the people that she was talking with is by being with them, sharing who she was and her journey so that they could find hope and strength through her message. And people who are suffering from an affliction, and guess what? We all suffer from an affliction of some sort or another. It's, it's not that we will withdraw from that, deny it, but Christ is saying lean into it. Share with others who have the similar affliction. So, for instance, in 12-step uh, work, you know, there's, there's nothing like an alcoholic who's talking to another alcoholic. They know. You don't have to explain much. They know. And from that person, there's hope because I see you've done it. Maybe I can do it myself. And so there's, there's this commonality. There's this, this, what would we call it, this, this, human condition that we all suffer from in our own way, shape, or form, that those who come to Christ seeking that healing come to Christ perhaps through us who have also been healed of the anger, of the resentment, of the fear, 
of what's going on in our lives. Working through it, not, not perfectly. You know, it's one step forward, two steps back, three steps forward, that's how it works. Healing doesn't just happen like that overnight. I wish it did. But it's a, it's a constant movement. And it's a constant reaffirmation of an opening up of ourselves to God who is touching us in the ways that we think are maybe our weakness. God is using our weakness, our affliction, so that he can help others and he will help others through our touch. So when we touch others, it's not out of a distant, oh, I feel sorry for you. It's, it's a, I'm with you. I've been there. I'm with you. I know what you're going through. So whatever it is, I'm there for you. It's hard. It's hard entering into somebody else's suffering because there's such a feeling of, of powerlessness. Like, like with my friend, Sister Mary Ellen, like I said, I wish I could have done something. I wish my ordination would, would have included the, the power of curing and healing. Man, I'll tell you, just like Jesus, these chairs would be full if, if people knew that, boom. And there are pastors or ministers or people out there who claim that as a gift. Okay, well, it's, you know. And people are desperate enough to try anything. You know, when my mom had cancer, they were, they were, my dad was, was researching so many things. They were, they were talking about taking shark cartilage and whatever else that was promising a fix or a cure. I mean, when you're in, when you're desperate, like the people in our story, they will go miles and miles and miles for even the hope of being relieved of their affliction. But what people are so desperate, what, what, what's even more afflicting to us as human beings, what, why, why people are so desperate, it's, it's not the physical ailment, I believe. It's we are desperate to have that relationship with God that has been broken. Our relationship as human beings, has, the relationship has been broken because of sin. And we are desperately trying to find a way out. And, and in our world, people are trying to find ways out of that by, oh, all sorts of things. You know, seeking money, fame, power, whatever, whatever promise is made out there, people will go to it, cling to it, because there's the hope that they're going to find some deeper meaning to their lives. Because their lives are so broken, and they can't seem to find God. And so these people come to Jesus just to touch the hem of his garment. They know, or at least they believe, that Jesus is the way. Jesus is the one who will heal, who will bring that healing relationship between them and God. Sometimes in, we, we do get, dis, we, it's, it's true, we, we sometimes despair. I don't just watch the news. We fall into despair. What does this all mean? Well, as Christians, as followers of Christ, who have been touched and who have touched the living God, our message is clear. Through Christ, who came to us and touched us, we know in faith that our lives have great meaning and that we do not have to fear we don't even have to fear death itself so that we can lean in to the pain of the world and to be with those who are suffering.
which includes us too. That's why a community of faith is so important because together the healing occurs in the Holy Spirit that brings us together. And that's why it's so important for us to be here so that we can share with one another. Now, it takes some vulnerability. Again, in our, well, in, in, in our Scandinavian, I'll just talk about the Scandinavian cultures for a minute. You don't tell anybody anything. You suffer and you suffer alone. You're just, it's, it's called stoicism, and boy, do we have that in spades. We're not going to let anyone know what's going on with us. We may be dying inside. We may be absolutely desperate, but we're not going to let you know because we don't want anybody to feel sorry for us. Well, okay. Now, I'm not talking about walking around just sharing everything about, you know, what's going on, but there has to be someone or some people, some group, that you can share what's going on with you. And in the sharing, in the opening up, you'll be amazed at how good you feel, or at least the burden is just not as heavy. We often hear, God doesn't give you anything more than you can handle. <clears throat> you like that one? You hear it all the time. I don't know if God gives us the afflictions or not. I don't think so. But I would, I would amend this to say, God doesn't give us anything that we can handle together. Together. We're here. We're in it together. And we're here because the Holy Spirit has brought us here, not just for our own sakes, but for the sake of the world. And so when I read this story about compassion with suffering, absolutely, we are people who suffer with and not at a distance from. So that healing, God's healing, God's mercy, God's grace, God's meaning, is shared, which strengthens us to take it one day at a time. One day at a time. All right? Amen? amen. I, I wait, I, you know, sometimes I think amen, and somebody's, no, talk some more. <laughs> no one's ever done that yet. Oh, well. <laughs> I, I see one, that's all it takes. Amen. <laughs>